So one of the things we do in pathology is uh, we do intraoperative frozen sections. In other words, you know, there's a concerning mass somewhere on the body. The surgeon will go in, just take a little small piece of it, and send it to us in pathology. And then we'll make a slide, an immediate slide, um, instead of going through the whole tissue fixation processing to look at it and give whether it's cancer, you know, cancer or benign or indeterminate. So today we're actually doing a, a case on a, on a, there is a mass that we're getting. So this is a cryostat machine where we actually do the cutting, we freeze it. So we first measure it. We'll have to just get a representative piece. Don't forget to bring it to me, sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, you know what? I guess let me know if you want levels too, buddy. Take it. I don't know what I got going on here. Yeah. 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 Cam doesn't require us to stick to that 20 minutes anymore. It's whatever standard we, we oh we established. Like 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. So. Basically, that 20 minute rule uh -huh. used to be there a long time ago. Uh -huh. It's a guideline, but we don't have to necessarily follow it. Oh, okay. So once we ink it, we the reason we ink it. Oh. Is over here. <laughs> 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 oh, oh. Spoken like a true. Uh, yeah, uh, his, yeah, you're being real. <laughs> this is where all the challenges are over here. <laughs> so the reason we ink it is in case the cancer goes to the outside. Um, yeah. Or it touches the ink, then it means you know there's probably cancer still inside the patient's body. The surgeon just got an incision here. The thin cross section, so it's something easy we can freeze here. Yes. <laughs> so now our histotech is putting more OCT compound in it, and we'll freeze it. What's the temperature of this uh, cryostat? Minus 25. Yeah. Celsius. Celsius. Right. So he's putting free spray spray to freeze the OCT. To flatten the, the tissue as well. Yeah, to flatten it. You don't want to overdo it with the free spray. Alright, here we go. Nice and flat. Nice and flat in order for us to put it on the the cutting on the, on the cutting station. That's a fast freezing. Give it a little extra. To give us the idea of practicing pathology in a war zone. That's the sound. That's the yeah, all that construction. <laughs> this button here controls the this platform to make it go back or forward. So when he pushes that arrow towards him, it just brings the whole platform forward, and that blade, as you can see, will cut it. Full face section. Oh no, sir. We scheduled the name of Ross. Get ready. Ready, sir. You're next. So what are you what are you doing with it? You're staining it up. Yes, sir. All right. Sure. What's the last one? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ten seconds. One. You count. I'm gonna do another session. I'm gonna go stain that one. So we put it in alcohol. Now we run it through our stain line. So the two main stains we put this in as the hematoxylin eucin, which is our red pink stain. The hematoxylin mostly stains um, negative charged portion of the cell, which is the nucleus, and the hematoxylin stains the positively charged portion of the cells, which is more the cytoplasm. Then that way we can now look at, look at it under the microscope. So now that uh, our histotech has finished staining it, because without the stain it's just clear, but now it has color. Now she's putting on this cover safe drops and then the cover slip. And now we're done. So we'll go ahead and take it back to... Now we'll go look at it. We've brought the frozen section slide um, to look at, and then once we team tag this, and see what we can see. So we'll just have to call the surgeon, and then here, I guess in this case, she will uh, then approach the surgery depending on the result that we give her. Hmm. 
So we're just scanning it right now. It's a lot of fibrous tissue. Yeah. It's pretty Not bland looking, fibrous tissue. Yeah. yeah, so bland is our code for just benign looking. So, hypocellular fibrous tissue, I don't know if I should. Was there anything on the gross that looked, you know, more colored or more, uh, yeah, maybe I should go back and you know, more colors. pink or something? Did you cut, did you, I just kind of did we'll just have to, we have to go back. We had a bread loaf it and see if there's yeah. anything else. I don't see anything exciting here at all. Yeah. Very, very little grades are coming. She's bringing another level, but I think we're going to have to go back in and get some other sections to see if there's anything abnormal. This one doesn't show anything really bad, which is good for the patient. But we want to make sure that we look at a good um, representative of all the different sections of that that mass that she gave us that lesion. So we got to look Anyways. at the gross again because uh, you didn't see what you need to see. It didn't, I mean, they didn't see much of anything worrisome. All it was was just mostly uh, benign, like fibrous type tissue. So do you want another block? Or? We might yeah. Do, yeah, we may do a second block. Second block. All right. But if it looks the same, I mean... Yeah, it's all kind of like... It's then we, getting all over it, but it's just... Uh, it might not be any different. It might just be the whole thing. It's fairly homogenous, you would say. You get one section per size of the lesion. Or size of the specimen. This specimen is just 2.1 centimeters in greatest dimension, so we got to get at least two sections. We just got one, so we're gonna we went back and we're, we're putting actually just two more representatives. Um, we'll go from there. This heat, heat sink, um, what it does is essentially sucks out all the heat from the OCT. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're. I don't think we're going to see anything else. We don't want to have a false negative. Yeah. We don't want to do a, a bird, right? We, we don't want to get it fixed. Yeah, one piece is taller so with this, yeah. the sectioning ideally would be, we want to section through the whole thing. This yeah. one looks like there's just a little angle. I'm gonna get, I may give you, since it's kind of lopsided, I may give you this and then go deeper. That's fine. This is where you do not want to begin freaking out. You stay calm, you think through your options, the best options available, and then you do it. Right, right, Ross? Yes, sir. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, you gotta stay calm under pressure. It's key for intraoperative frozen section. Yeah, sometimes you'll have little bubbles that are in there but our focus is that tissue. After each cut, the stage actually automatically moves closer by as much as five microns. There's one aspect, but it's not a full face section that we wanted, but that's what we can with that. It's that bubble that's kind of preventing the full access to this one. Well, that and also I was I would say we need to bring it closer to the I that's think okay. it was just uh that's okay. One sink a little deeper. Maybe next time we need another platform the surface this is solidified. Yeah. There you go, there you go, there you go. There you go. That's a good one. As best as we're gonna get it. 
you want to reposition for that other one? Yeah, I'll do that. That would be a good idea. So if both uh, tissue specimens aren't on the same plane, the best thing is to you know rotate it and angle it with these handles that he's got. And uh, and then it'll start cutting through the other tissue that we need. So as you can see, he's starting to cut into the tissue there, that second one, but we need the full cross section of that. So the second uh, pass through, we are taking back to, to look at it. Oh, okay, okay. It has slit like vascular spaces and dense fibrous strong. So I think that's what we got. Yeah. Maybe there's pink fibrous strong. There's a vessel in the middle there. So now that we've looked at it and we feel comfortable with uh, what we think, then we just need to call the surgeon in the OR and let her know what uh, what our findings are. In this case, we just see benign fibrosis, uh, fibrosis, inflammation, some vessels. Don't really see any giant cells or um, spindle cells. So it's good for the patient. Yeah. So we're done with the frozens. <clears throat> and what's the procedure now after you guys do the finish the after we finish the frozen? We put the um the block in the cassette, try to close it as much as possible, mm -hmm. and wash out the OCT compound with some warm water, and rinse everything out, and then we put it in formalin, and then process it as a paraffin block. Perfect, yeah. perfect, perfect. Do that right now. And, and one of the things we don't want to do on social media is what, Aaron Ross? <laughs> patient information. We don't want yeah. any patient information or identifiers on this. So now he's warming up the the tissue that's inside the frozen OCT compound and the chuck platform inside this. Casino. One way to do it, to get that OCT off is just put it under warm water or even cold water. Yeah, you can use cold water too. Yeah. Warm water does it faster, that's the thing. Yeah, and then once that thing washes off, then the tissue will remain behind inside the cassette. Point where I just do like this. There we go, it's off the chuck. That's the little chuck. I'm trying to keep it down so I don't lose any tissue. Yeah. And just close it at some point. And just check it again. There you go. All right, now he closed it. Let, Let it, it melt. Rin rinse off all the way. Yeah. So once you uh, rinse the uh, OCT compound with uh, warm water, uh, the sponges is to maintain the integrity of the, or the orientation, if you will, of the specimen, so that when Eamon Ross she um, embeds tomorrow, she's going to embed this down uh -huh. um, to show the same surface that we sh we got at the uh, frozen section area. Okay. So.